the Dell XPS 13. Is it the best Linux laptop you can get? Let's find out. When I decided to replace my laptop for something better, I started my research. I needed a decently powerful, portable and Linux friendly machine. And here's where the XPS 13 comes to play. Let's start from the specs. This laptop packs an Intel Core i7-6560U dual-core quad-thread CPU clocked at 3.2 GHz with an Intel Iris 540 GPU. It has 8 GB of DDR3 RAM, a 256 GB NVMe SSD and a Quad HD Plus IPS touchscreen with a resolution of 3200 by 1800. You probably figured it out by yourself, but this thing is a little beast. The design of this laptop is very refined. It's got a nice aluminum chassis on the top and on the bottom, and the internal part is made of polycarbonate with a nice soft touch finish and a subtle carbon fiber texture. The touchscreen is really one of a kind. It's bright, high resolution, accurate and pleasing to look at. It's covered by Corning Gorilla Glass for extra resistance and it has almost no bezels. This thing is really beautiful. As for the I.O., it's got two USB 3 ports on the left and right sides, an SD card reader on the right, a headphone and microphone combo jack, a classic charging port and a USB Type-C port on the left side, along with a special button and five LEDs to show the battery level even when the PC is in standby. The USB Type-C port even doubles as a charging port and it's Thunderbolt 3 enabled. On the right and left side there are the two speakers, which are decent enough, although I would have expected something better. The power brick is really well designed, it's probably one of the best I've seen in a while. It's nice and compact with its professional looking curvy design and the cable can be wrapped around it to make it easier to carry around and avoid cable masses in your backpack. And as a final touch, the tip of the cable is illuminated, so it's easier to find when you're in a dark room or if you need to identify it among other people's cables. But enough with the hardware, let's talk about the software experience with this laptop. Before even buying the laptop, the first thing I did was reading the page about it on the Arch Wiki. I will put the link in the description, if you want to buy this laptop, it's an important page to read. Before even installing Linux on it, I had to do some things from Windows. I really don't get why Dell chose to release some BIOS and hardware firmware updates through Windows only. The first thing I had to do was updating the BIOS to the latest version, and that was, well, easily done through USB flashing directly through the BIOS. The second thing I had to do was boot into Windows 10 to update the Thunderbolt port firmware. Finally, I wanted to disable a hardware feature in this PC. Basically, Dell implemented this adaptive backlight feature in the XPS panel so that when the screen shows a mostly dark picture, it dims the backlight automatically via hardware. Many people complained about it, so Dell chose to release a fix that, again, had to be run through Windows. Damn it, Dell. The little updater didn't even work correctly. It complained about the Intel driver not being the correct version, so I updated it, but it was still complaining so I had to edit an .ini file manually and enter the correct version of the Intel driver myself. It was really a big pain. For future reference, I will leave the link to a Reddit thread about it in the description. When it was time to finally install Linux, I ran into some problems again. I chose to install Intergus on it, and there was a problem with booting. It seems like Grub isn't able to boot from NVMe drives yet, so I had to install systemd boot instead. Not really a big problem, I only use Linux anyway, so not having the grub is nothing to be worried about. For the file system I went with F2FS, a file system specifically designed to work well with SSDs, optimizing their speed and extending their lifetime. Be wary that using this file system is not just plug and play, I had to edit some files manually, so if you don't know what you're doing, just avoid F2FS and choose something like easier, for example, X4 will do well for SSDs as well. As for the desktop environment, I chose GNOME as usual and I found it works pretty well with touchscreens. It also handles scaling for high density displays such as this one very nicely. I still have some scaling problems with older apps like Gparted or Audacity, 
but it's nothing major, so they're usable anyway and I don't really use them so often, so I guess it's fine. This particular model comes with a Broadcom wireless card in it, but it was no problem at all, since the latest kernel, that is of course available right away on Arch and its derivates, has built-in support for this particular wireless card. The developer edition of this laptop comes with an Intel wireless card, so it's better supported by Linux, but I got no problem with the Broadcom one whatsoever, so I don't really care for it. But in case you're using an older kernel or you just plain hate Broadcom, you can change your wireless card by yourself with the Intel one. You can buy it on Amazon for about 25 to 30 euros, so it's not even a huge deal. You'll find the link to the Intel wireless card down in the description in case you want to buy one. A final small issue with this laptop and Linux is that if you put it in standby mode and wake it up, the touch screen doesn't work. It's annoying, but not difficult to work around. When you wake it up, just close the lid almost completely and then open it again. I don't know why, but it fixes it, so I guess it's not a huge deal again. After sorting all these small problems, the Dell XPS 13 proves to be a great laptop. First of all, the battery life is great. And if you need any more juice, you can grab a power bank from Dell specifically designed to charge this laptop and your smartphone too. So it even doubles as a standard power bank. To take the most out of the battery, I also installed TLP, a Linux daemon that switches to power save mode when the laptop isn't charging. I suggest it to everyone using a laptop with Linux. Since this laptop only has an Intel GPU, I decided to go full Wayland on it. It doesn't differ too much from the Xorg session, but it adds extra features and gestures to improve the user experience like four finger swipes to change workspaces and pinch to zoom directly from the trackpad. This little beast can handle all of my daily tasks, no problem. From programming to note taking, web browsing, vector and raster graphics, video editing and even some casual gaming. I mean, this is no gaming PC for sure, but you will have no problem running some less demanding games on it like uh, Starbound or Sonatic and honestly it's enough for me to be entertained for a while when I'm on the go. Overall this laptop makes for a very good travel companion and I will enjoy it for sure when I'll be getting back to university. For its price point, form factor and hardware features it makes for a great competitor to something like the new MacBook and even the MacBook Pro. It has a fast CPU and SSD, a small form factor, a high resolution display and finally, it's light, portable, and come on, freaking sexy. As for the software, you know how much I love Linux, and I can tell you this beauty handles it incredibly well. As a programmer, I'm happy to have a portable machine I can enjoy coding on, and Linux is for sure the best OS for programmers. Mac OS and Windows 10 don't stand a chance against it. So guys, this is gonna wrap up this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please press the thumbs up button down there and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Again guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.